you said that on the train, right, to and from school, um, you would study questions and answers that you made. So tell me about that. Like, how do you make these questions and answers? How do you study them? Tell me your routine. Okay. So, like, for questions and answers, I would highlight, like, for bios, I was was already sorted with my tuition, (laughs) via tuition, like, all Mm. the CAQs, I would just look through those. And those are very efficiently written. So I try to replicate that same thing for my other subjects. So I would, like, like common questions for like physics or con- common concepts for physics. I like write, I just like, because it would it, it'd also take a lot of time to make these, like making the CAQs must have been like quite time yeah. consuming. So like I just make like questions that were like a bit vague, but that got my brain thinking. So like maybe more complicated questions, I might have taken pictures of them, like collated a list so that I can just like see the questions and then test myself on the train because I also lived quite far from my school so then during that time I, I was like it takes me like an hour to reach home so I want to make sure that I utilize that time or then that time just go like two hours my whole day is just wasted on like transport and not utilizing that time it's so important that I utilize that time and so I will make sure that I had these notes prepared for me so that I can read them on the bus and on the train and they were quite easy to make. Sometimes if I was lazy, I'd just take a picture. i just put in a list. And also, I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't coordinate... I wouldn't, like, organize them into subjects. I would just leave them all together. All the subjects mix. So that I'm transferring from subject to subject as well. Because I feel like it allows me to forget more. But even when I forget more, when I recall it the next time, I, like, remember it for a much longer time. Yeah. So... That's like how I incorporated that during my transport time. Okay, I have two things to point out and one question. So first thing to point out is most students would complain that I live so far from school, Mm. right? They'd be like, oh, I so little time to study. But like, you know, shut up. Like, look (laughs) at this. You you live very far and you can still make good use of the time, right? Most people will probably just like waste time on phone. So... Good, you you actually use the time correctly. And actually, this is the smart thing to do because if you can do most homework in school or during the in-between class, waste time periods, right? and you can do it on the way home, revising or whatever on the way home, then you can relax at home. Mm. Like, isn't that great? Exactly. Because you don't want to relax in the tra- during your transport time when you can't really do anything you're like standing or sitting down you can't like play games on your PS5 or whatever so yeah, you yeah. study during that period so when you go home you can have like time to play on your PS5 uh, or like play with your dog yeah, <laughs> yeah. whatever so like you actually like make sure that your time is really well spent yeah oh my what's the other thing okay the question I had what's the question let me think let me think and then I had another thing to point out wait you talked about the what do you take jog? I took lit. Lit. Okay, so it's like lit and some random lit literary work that you have to memorize and answer questions to. Yeah. So I haven't heard of this before, but I have heard of research that shows for doing these kind of active recall of flashcards things. Right. If you put all the same concept together and test the person, it's not as good compared to if you shuffle the concepts because mm. they don't know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right about when you forget more and it's harder to recall the answer, that is when you benefit more with yeah. the memorization, right? So you you're like taking it to the next level. Not only shuffling concepts, you're shuffling <laughs> to subjects. So yeah, so that's quite insane. I, I wanted to ask the questions and answers, right? So how so basically they are the commonly asked questions for each of the subjects, right? Okay. Then the questions itself where do you get them? Do you have to like write them out yourself, type them out yourself? Well, like usually, I'd be quite lazy. Mm. So I just like, I would screenshot because a lot of things were like, like transferred to digital with PLDs and everything. So like a lot of them were online. So I just screenshot and I put into one file. And so all the questions would be like listed out and random subjects also. So I didn't know what to expect. And so they would be like, also varied from like a long period of time. So sometimes I'd like see questions that were from like, like I just like, I close my eyes and <laughs> swipe and then oh. randomly pick one. And it was also like, I didn't feel neglected if I didn't know the answer to the question because I knew at the end of the day I was still benefiting. Oh. So like, even though it's like a bunch of questions and like a lot of times you may not know the answers, in the end of the day, you still benefit. And it's yeah. like hard questions sometimes too. It's like, 
questions that I know always get me. And then when so much time has passed of you doing these same things, you benefit so much at the end of it that you realize, hey, all these questions, you, you know of it already. Stay, you're so familiar. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. Okay, so I have one more question plus one thing to point out. The, the thing that you, you said, right, is a very good point. Something that I would, I suffer in is that I base a lot of my self esteem and how confident I feel based on my performance and which is not a very good healthy mental mm. mentally healthy thing to do so during the flashcards thing right or like what your practice is if I fail to answer a lot of the questions I will feel very bad about myself yeah. but you just said a very good point which is it doesn't matter even if you didn't initially know the answer then you have to see the answer right yeah. and, and you're still benefiting so much because it's especially when you don't know then that's when the most benefit comes, mm. right? If you already knew it, then the benefit is much less. Yeah. Yeah, so you're very right. You shouldn't feel frustrated if you can't get the answer for the active recall. Yeah, okay. The question I had was, the, so just to clarify, you would screenshot maybe like PowerPoint slides that your teachers go through, right? Mm. Like, oh, I know that's a commonly one. Yeah. Screenshot. You put in this file. And then you... How do you get the answers? Also in those PowerPoint slides? Yeah, you the screenshot. part... The Sometimes like, because it's all on PLD, I have my Apple Pen, then I just write the answers there during those lessons, so then mm. I just screenshot from there. Oh, that's sick. Okay. So, so it was quite like easy to compile these questions. So you screenshot, you based on a Word doc, Google doc? Yeah, I would like put them into like a file. Okay. And then is it one very long doc? All the subjects? Or is it each, each subject has its own doc? No, no, no. It's like one big document with a bunch Ooh. of questions. Because I thought it was better that way that everything was sort of unexpected. So, so you didn't even organize it? La. No, I, I didn't, I didn't organize it. Just, just dump everything. Because I was Not also bad, like, I was a bit tired to like organize everything. And it was also a bunch of questions. So I just dump everything. And then it was, it was also easier for me that way. Dang. Okay, not bad. I think if it was me, what I would do is, if I was like in your shoes, right? What would I do as a student? I would definitely do that screenshotting method because it saves so much time. Right? I don't have to type it or write it myself. Um, but I would need to know which are actually important. Mm. So maybe for me, I would have, like, let's say I have five subjects, right? I have five documents, like five or five folders. And just put all of the screenshots inside there. Then I would uh, go through, like, let's say, oh, prelims is coming. Before I start revising all these, I will go through and delete all those which are not important because mm-hmm. we always think some stuff are important when they're not, right? And I'll be re- left with actually the only important stuff. Mm. Then I'll have an extra folder where I put, I copy everything inside. Then I do what you do. Uh, just random. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's like better when you like realize a question is, oh yeah, okay, I've seen this so many times, I can delete already. Oh. So I, I didn't do that though. Because oh, I was is, is it not, not like so. deleting if it's important? If it's a CAQ, I want it there. Even mm. if I've seen it many times. I'm saying like, because sometimes we think this is a CAQ, but actually it's not. Mm. Uh, then you waste your time if you memorize that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So being clear on what is actually important to memorize. So if you like that clip, click here to watch another. And if you want to watch the full podcast, click here.